excited that you're here today. Um, I want to start out with a question. Have you ever watched a feel-good movie and wondered, what would life be like if everything played out like an uplifting movie? Like everything goes right. right. Well, to start out today's message, I want you to, to check out this new movie trailer from Studio C. Check it out. She steals the ball. They're all trying to get her. They can't catch her. Oh, oh, she gets it. She gets past their defense. She scores! One girl's dream. Put against forces bigger than herself. I'm going to be a professional someday. I'm sorry, but you can't. Your mother is sick. We'll put her to the ultimate test. <laughs> Don't give up on your dreams. Never. You're the one who taught me field hockey. The love that you have for your mother is inspiring. That's why I want you to join the American field hockey team to help us defeat the bad guys from that other country in the big competition. Do it for me <coughs> and for America. <sighs> this is your new teammate, Sierra. Show us what you got, Sierra. You're incredible. Will you be my best friend? And you should be team captain. If we win this game today, there will be no more bad things ever. But first, we have a new teammate joining us. Rufus, you're back from war? Yeah. Let's go defeat some Soviets. And the love we have for each other. America on three! USA! Can get us through anything. You got this. I believe in you. This summer, feel the warm fuzzies. And just when you thought it couldn't get more uplifting. Are you my long lost twin? Sierra? Arez? Mom, you're okay? Yes. Your dad donated his own heart so that I could live. That's such a huge sacrifice. It's okay, because I had two hearts. Your story has moved me so much. I have decided we will forfeit. You win. No, we will forfeit so you win. No, I'm the president of the United States. You're all winners. No bad things will ever happen again. <laughs> Shall we go home? Absolutely. Uplifting the movie. <laughs> so wouldn't it be great if life was like that? Wouldn't that be awesome? It just if everything worked out perfectly all the time, right? But as we all know, life doesn't always work out like that. It almost never works out like that. There are times in our lives when it seems like everything goes wrong. Right? And there's been times in my life where, to be honest, joy felt, felt kind of elusive. You know, circumstances were, were really hard. Happiness didn't seem like it was anywhere in reach. And so today, I don't think I'm the only one that has had moments like that. And so we're going to talk about joy and peace, even when everything seems like it's going wrong. And so this is the third message in a series that we've called Fresh Off the Vine. It's a study on the fruits of the Spirit. We're going through the fruit of the Spirit, that those things that are the indicators to show us if we're plugged into the vine. And so that was the first message. And then last week, we talked about the first fruit, love. And if you missed any, either one of those, I'd recommend you go back to, uh, to our Facebook page. I'm sorry, well, Facebook YouTube, website, Church Center app. But today we're going to be talking about two of the fruit and we're going, to, we're going to put them together and talk about them together. And that is joy and peace in our lives. Because when we think about joy and when we think about peace in our lives, a lot of times we think about those moments when everything's okay, when everything's going right. You know, and sometimes some of us would think, well, if things would start working out for me, then the anxiety would stop, right? If I could just get to a point where things would stop happening, 
that constantly set me back, then I could have joy and peace. And we have this common misconception that our circumstances need to be right in order for us to have joy or contentment or, or, to, or to have peace. And this sneaks into our thinking as well. In other words, if our lives could only be like that uplifting movie, right? And I know that was a little extreme for, for comedy's sake. But, but seriously, isn't that kind of what we're looking for? Is everything to always work out the way we think it should? And that makes sense because we always want things to work out for us. And, and that's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. However, here's the problem. When we think that the circumstances dictate our fruit, when we don't realize that joy and peace, they aren't the fruit of your circumstances. They're not the fruit of my circumstances. They don't develop. We don't get them because of the circumstances. See, remember, they're fruit that naturally develop from the Spirit, from walking in the Spirit, from staying plugged into the vine. So we look into... Uh, the back of the book for the answers, right? We look, we look to the fruit in our lives and maybe we see that we don't have the correct answer because maybe we don't find a lot of joy right now or a lot of peace right now. And so our, our natural inclination is to diagnose that problem. And we do that by looking at all the circumstances. Why don't I have joy and peace? Well, let's look at all the circumstances that create a lack of joy or a lack of peace. And so we do our best to fix it from the outside in by fixing the circumstances. And what we've discovered in previous messages, that's the flaw in our thinking, in our strategy to become the person that we want to be. The flaw is thinking that if only our circumstances would change, then our joy would change. Then I could have some peace. If he would just leave me alone. If she would just stop doing that. And this is not true. And this is what we, 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 so many times we go through when we experience those dark times. When we're feeling maybe hopeless in, in difficult times. Dark times. When we're struggling with persistent feelings of maybe sadness or even depression or anxiety and worry. And when we're experiencing those things and it seems like peace and joy are just out of reach and that we're only going to feel happy if things would just fix themselves, right? We, f we find ourselves, if we think that way, in a cycle of despair and anxiety, thinking that joy and peace, there's, that there's something that we can't seem to attain in the midst of our struggles, and then eventually, even subconsciously, what will happen is we'll believe that if our circumstances don't change, our joy and peace can't either. And we get trapped in the lie that joy and peace are the fruit of our circumstances instead of the fruit of the Spirit that's, that comes from staying connected to the vine, to Jesus that our circumstances, that, that our joy or our peace, it, it depends on all of our circumstances getting better. And you might say, no, Mike, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'd just be okay if everything just didn't always seem to go wrong, right? And we all face ups and downs. And sometimes, just to be transparent, real joy and peace could be elusive. It could be like this thing that we used to have one time but can't seem to grasp right now. But... What if, what if joy and peace could be constant regardless of what we're going through, regardless of our circumstances? What if joy could be your strength? What if your peace was more than anyone could understand because it's consistent regardless of your circumstances? So today, what I want to propose to you is that it can be like that. In fact, it's not actually me that proposes this, but the Apostle Paul that proposes this. So if you have your Bibles, digital or physical, turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 4. Now, Philippians was a letter written to a church in a city called Philippi. That's the name Philippians. And the church in Philippi, they were experiencing huge, huge challenges, including persecutions for their faith. And there were, they were trying to live out their faith in a culture that was completely hostile toward Christians and Christianity. And so their circumstances, they, they weren't great, right? And so to this struggling church, Paul writes this, 
Rejoice in the Lord always, which sounds kind of trite because that, that means, hey, just be happy all the time. Which they would say, yeah, that, whatever. Like, okay, Paul, you're not here with us. Thanks so much. So Paul says, all right, fine. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Which this seems a little bit inc- or insensitive considering what they're going through. It's like telling somebody who has their entire life going wrong. And you say to them, just be happy. Just, would you stop it and just be happy? Oh, you don't like that? Well, let me say it again. Just be happy. This is what this sounds like. But here's the thing. As inconsiderate as this seems, actually, they wouldn't have taken it this way. And the reason that they wouldn't have taken it that way is because they knew that Paul knew something about what they were going through. And the reason that they knew that was because as Paul pins these words, just be happy, he's actually going through worse circumstances than they were. He was actually being persecuted for his faith. And in fact, he's not just being persecuted for his faith. He's actually, uh, as he writes about joy and having peace, as we'll find out, he's actually in prison. Yeah. And, and not the cushy prison. Like a Roman prison. We know from history that in, Rome, in AD 61, he was imprisoned in Rome, and he wasn't writing from a comfortable place where all the circumstances in his life were going his way. Nope. Everything had gone sideways. He was locked up. He was facing an uncertain future. He didn't know what tomorrow would bring. And so in the midst of that, he says, hey, guys, rejoice. Be glad. Don't worry. Be happy. Have peace. And obviously, he thinks that it may be hard for them to hear the first time because he says, hey, guys, let me say it again. Lean in. Be happy. Be glad. Could you imagine being in prison just because you're a Christian and yet writing about rejoicing always? When you think about it, that's pretty powerful. And Paul's situation makes his message about joy and this idea of having peace even more impactful because he is living proof that maybe, just maybe, our joy and our peace doesn't have to be dependent upon our circumstances and the inconsistency of life. But if that's true, if we can lay down anxiety, anxiety over the things in our lives, our workplace, our work, if we can lay down our our work our anxiety over our school or over what our kids are going through or or their concerns for our parents or that relationship or worry over, over our country right now or over world war, whatever it is, if it's true that somehow we could trade our worry and anxiety when things seem to be going wrong, if that's even possible, then here's what we all wanna know is like, how do we do that? How do we trade anxiety and possibly even depression? How do we trade it for peace and for joy? And for some of you here today, you may be looking at this and you may say, okay, Micah, I don't have anxiety or depression, but let me ask you this question. Do you have all the peace that you can handle? Do you have all the peace that you want in your life? Or let me ask this question. How about joy? Could you use a little bit more joy? You might need to ask the people around you. Do we have all we can handle? Do we have all of God and the fruit of the spirit of joy and peace that we can handle? And these are all great questions. What, like, Because here's the question. What kind of mental or emotional calisthenics do I have to do to find more peace? And more joy. What do I have to do to find peace in my life that's, that is riddled with things that are so good at causing anxiety? And it would seem that Paul actually anticipates that question. How do I do it? And, and he knows it's a great question because he's probably asked it to himself and everything that he's been through. And what he's done is he's found the secret. The secret to finding that ultimate peace and joy. And being able to confidently rejoice and be glad regardless of circumstances, even prison. 
And so he continues. He continues this with what I think are four of the most powerful words that he could write from his dark and damp prison cell. Because it's in that dark place that he simply says, the Lord is near. The Lord is near. What, Micah? That, that's it? God is near, so now I'm happy. I'm peaceful. Listen, if you could understand the significance of these four w- words, it could actually change the trajectory of your life. It could change everything. And if you don't hear anything else today, here's what I want you to hear. True peace don't come from everything getting better. True joy, lasting joy, and true peace comes from a deep connection with the vine, with Jesus. And and let me say that again, because I don't want you to dismiss this as some religious saying that preachers would say, because that's what it sounds like. But this is true power in your life. True joy and peace come from a deep connection with Jesus. Or you could say it this way. If we could stay connected to Jesus, the vine, joy is a natural response. Peace is a natural response because who you are connected to. Peace is something that comes because of that connection with Jesus. And joy and peace come, watch this, regardless of what's going on around you. When we remain in him, when we stay connected to the vine, his joy becomes our strength, the Bible says. His peace is incomprehensible. And when joy becomes our strength, and when his his peace becomes our peace, I want you to lean in. Don't miss this. When that happens, it enables us to face life's toughest challenges with hope and strength and power and resilience. And when we lean into him and his presence in prayer, into his word in the Bible, that is when we get deeply connected to him and these things come out naturally. Because what happens when we stay connected to him Out of that relationship with him, we don't have to be anxious about anything. But because we're connected to him, in every situation, we pray and we petition God. With thanksgiving, we present a request to God. And when you're connected with Jesus, and when you've given him, when I've given him control of the situation, Paul says something amazing happens. He says, after this... Then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it's more than you could understand. It'll actually guard your hearts and your mental health, your mind in Christ Jesus. And that, my friends, that's how we become the joyful person we want to be. That is how we live every day in peace. So when Paul says, hey, rejoice in the Lord always, he's not just, he's not just offering empty words. He's telling us a profound truth that he himself has found out and lived. Because joy and peace is not about having the perfect circumstances. He wasn't in that. They're about staying plugged into the vine, staying connected to Jesus. Which brings us back to the words of Jesus when he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So if you'll remain in me and I in you, guys, you're going to bear all that fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit that He wants us to have. Because of a deep connection with Him, He wants us to have joy every day and peace every day. The joy and the peace that's a natural fruit of a branch connected to Jesus. Not because you're trying to diagnose and change your circumstances to get joy and peace. Think about that for just a second. Jesus is painting this picture of a deep organic connection. The branches don't strive to produce fruit. They don't stress about it. They just stay connected to the vine and the fruit of peace and joy comes. The life, the nutrients, everything that we need to bear the joy or the fruit of joy and peace, it naturally flows from the vine into us, the branches. It's supposed to be effortless because it is a result of our deep connection 
Now, if you're here maybe, and maybe you're, you're, you're not sure if you're all in on this Jesus stuff, you're, you're not a Jesus follower, and it could be because you ran into some people throughout your life that presented themselves as a Christian but had anything but joy or peace in their life. And maybe you just thought, yeah, I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if I'm buying this Jesus thing. Listen, I want you to know that when we run across that mean, grouchy, anxious person that says they love Jesus, they may love him. I'm not questioning that at all. But here's what I am saying. If the fruit on the tree is consistently void of joy or peace, they probably don't have a deep connection with the one that they claim to follow. Now, to be transparent, I know that's rough, but let me be transparent. That's been true of me. When I've had the least peace, when I've been frustrated and I've worried, when I've been void of joy and have been difficult and even rude, those were the times when my prayer times were slipping. When I had fallen off of my daily Bible reading plan, I came disconnected. Those were the times when I wasn't spending devotional time with God every day. It was when I had not remained in him. It's when I had let my connection to the vine slip that the fruit began to slip. And look, this is what Paul is trying to address with the Philippians, right? And his encouragement for them to rejoice and not be anxious, that would have been, man, that would have been a radical but a comforting message for them because they knew where he was. And Paul had the knowledge to say this because of his own experiences, because, see, when you've, when you've experienced something that God has done in your life, not just knowing about his goodness, but knowing the goodness of God, that changes the conviction that you have about him. You see, it's possible that as Paul writes these words, rejoice, he's remembering something that had happened years before when he was in prison another time. Because he and his partner Silas, they had been captured and beaten and thrown into prison for preaching the gospel. And that account actually is in Acts 16, where it says, at midnight, Paul and his partner Silas, they're in prison. And so they're praying and singing hymns to God in prison. And as they made the decision to pray and worship God in the midst of their circumstances, regardless of their situation, what happened? Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open And not just theirs, but everybody's chains fell off. And that wasn't all. It doesn't stop there. Because of what the guard saw in all this, it continues on and says that that the guard and his entire family, they surrendered their lives to Jesus and were baptized. It affected everybody around them. You see, when Paul and Silas, when they realized that their joy and peace had nothing to do with their situation... That's when they made the decision to rest in the peace that came from their connection to Jesus and therefore choose joy and gratitude to God in the midst of all the turmoil, all the evil. That's when God showed up in their circumstances. That's when God set them free, like literally chains off. And it was because of this uh, in part because of the situation that, that Paul had, had the wisdom to say, hey, rejoice in the midst of your circumstances. Let the peace and joy of God guard your hearts. And then Paul goes on back in Philippians, he goes on and he gives them some practical steps in how to walk on, in that joy. So instead of focusing on the negative and everything that goes on around you, because what happens when circumstances come around us? This is what worry is. It's reminding ourselves of the problem, trying to figure it out, trying to work through all that you're playing chess in your head and all the scenarios that could go wrong. That's what you're thinking about when circumstances are wrong. Paul gives us a different idea. He says, instead of that, focus on whatever's true and noble Think about what's right and pure and lovely. Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, uh, uh, or we should think about the other things. No, about these things. That we could see joy and peace 
in our lives regardless of all those things. You see, it's the thinking, it's the meditating, it's the searching for the good, the lovely, the praiseworthy in every situation. That's what helps us stay connected to the vine when circumstances are coming around us. It's what renews our thinking about our situation in the midst of the storm. It renews our thinking in the midst of our circumstances. And it's at that point that your circumstances has no power over you. Yeah, but Micah, you don't know what I'm going through. You, you don't understand the level of my pain. Maybe I don't. But here's the thing is, Jesus does. And the thing is, is he has been there. He was, he's been through worse than any of us. He was, he was persecuted. He was betrayed by everybody uh, that, that was around him. He was tortured, beaten, executed. And yet he rose from the dead and set us free from sin and the sting of death. He restored our relationship, the ability for us to have a relationship with the Father so that we can have the confidence to boldly enter to his presence and stay connected to the vine. To stay connected to that same spirit of him, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that if you have received him and surrendered our lives to him, that's now living in us. That same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, guys, it will also give life to your mortal bodies because of that same power, because of that spirit, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And once again, this is talking about, if you see it again, it's talking about living life from the inside out. Because of the spirit that lives big on the inside of us, we can allow the strength of the Holy Spirit to cause joy to well up in us and overflow into every area of our lives. We can allow the Prince of Peace to manifest himself as peace from the inside out in our life because of the spirit of God. Amen. When we choose to surrender our lives to Jesus and allow him to transform us from the inside out. That's what happens. And look, if you haven't made that decision yet, I want to encourage you to do that. If you want to make that decision or, or find out more about that, all you got to do, just stop by the next steps table after the service and just let them know you want to know more about this. So the Apostle Paul, he finishes up in Philippians with this, ver this thought. So, hey, guys, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me, all the stuff I've gone through or seen in me, do what I do. Put it into practice. In other words, he's saying, do the things that he was teaching, the things that he had experienced. And from what we've experienced from God, we can learn from those things as well. The past situations. See, that connection to the vine. If we can do what Paul did, the God of peace will be with you. So, maybe this week, if you're struggling to find joy or peace in your life, or if you could just use more, stay connected to the vine by meditating on this scripture this week that says, rejoice in the Lord always. Why? Because he's near. He's not far away. So you don't have to be anxious about anything. But instead, every, in every situation, with your prayers and your asking, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then, that's when the peace of God guards your hearts and your mental health, your mind, in Christ Jesus. Or once again, what I love to do is take the scriptures and turn them into prayers. And it might look like this. I will rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because I know you're near. And I will not be anxious about anything. But instead... Instead of being anxious, instead of thinking about all that stuff with prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, I'm going to present my request to God. And I know that the peace of God will guard my heart and mind and my mental health in Christ Jesus. What, what if you were this person? Like imagine what this would be like. That you were more than an overcomer through Christ who lives big on the inside of you that you were that person of joy and peace. Not because you're part of that perfect feel-good movie. No, because you're plugged into the perfect one. What if you could walk in peace and joy regardless of what's happening in the world around you? 
See, I want, this is what God believes that we can be. I want us to believe about ourselves, what God believes about us, that we have joy and gladness and peace built into the new creation that we are as we stay plugged into the vine. And here's what's so cool, is they can go way beyond what you experience. Because in the same way that Paul writes to others to encourage others with his experience and the things that he has figured out, what if we were able to share this? What if when those around us see life hammering us? What if the moments when they see everything going wrong in our lives, that they simultaneously see the fruit of the spirit of joy and peace that stands out? What, was, what if that was able to give a platform to Jesus with them? Or, or maybe you decide to share it with other people. Maybe you start a meet up and just share what you've learned, not because you're better than anybody else. No, just because you are more than yourself, because you've learned to plug into the power, the vine, Jesus. And look, these transformations, they're not gonna happen every night. They're gonna take meditation and prayer of the scriptures so you can get more plugged into the vine. But I'm telling you, I've seen it. And it can happen. And it will happen if you plug into the vine. And look, it's okay if it's not as quick as you like. Just be patient and watch God move in your life. Yeah, but Micah, like patience is not my thing. I mean, like, how do, how do I do that? Well, to find that out, you'll have to come back next week as we talk about the next fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. Would you stand with me?